Okay guys, so we're underneath the truck right now. Um, and what you can see right here, this is actually the, the brand new transmission that was put in. Um, so I'm, I'm still gonna take you step by step, but I wanted to come underneath here and show you, again, some of the basic components and things that have to be removed in order to get this puppy out. So, uh, first things first, you always want to disconnect your battery uh, from underneath the hood anytime you're doing any kind of work on a vehicle. Uh, safety precaution, you know, just in case anything gets grounded out, you're not gonna ruin anything, fry any of your computers or anything of that nature. Um, on the transmission itself, let's see if I can get an angle here. Right there, you can see there's a bunch of wires and stuff going in, electrical components right there. That is actually, a, it's called a Prendel switch or a neutral safety switch. And that's what uh, uh, your uh, transmission shift linkage is connected to, which is actually uh, this guy right here connects to this little arm into the side of the Prendel switch into the transmission. So when you use your shifter inside the vehicle, it uh, engages this into whatever gear you're trying to go into. Car's in park right now, so she's not going anywhere. But uh, the neutral safety switch here, uh, this has to be removed uh, from the side of the transmission and you're gonna replace that later on. But you wanna pull off your electrical connectors and everything here. You've got a couple here on the Prendel switch. Um, let's see here. You can't really see it here, but also on the passenger side of the transmission here, uh, right above where the camera is, there's another main electrical harness that goes into the transmission. This is a fully electronic transmission, so it does everything electronically. And then you've got another sensor right here that has to be undone from the harness. That's really about it on this transmission. There's only like four connectors for it, for the electrical harness. Um, so you want to remove all of that. And then, <clears throat> once you have that done, um, you can start taking off some of your other main components. First thing that you want to have to remove is the drive shaft. Uh, and this, this one's pretty big on this truck, it's a very big vehicle, so um, you're, there are that here for you. This here, this is your rear axle, or your differential. And there are four little bolts that hold in the U-joint on the back of the drive shaft. And that's what bolts it up to the yoke going into the differential right here. This is your yoke, this piece right here. <clears throat> so you want to undo the four bolts. There's two on this side, two on the other side back here. Undo those. You might have to pry that free. You get a little <clears throat> pry bar behind here. Just pry it out a little bit. It'll come right out. And once you have that loose, coming from the back side of the transmission, you'll be able to slide that out. Now, on this portion of the drive shaft, when you're sliding, ooh, where's my hand here? When you're sliding this out, you want to do it slowly and try and keep it as straight as possible because this, this is a seal. This is an output shaft seal. This is what keeps your transmission fluid from coming out because it does have to lubricate this, uh, the shaft. This there's basically metal splines inside of here. They're basically uh, machine metal guides, more or less. Um, they call it a spline, and that's what lines up the yoke on this side going into the transmission, the output side of the transmission. So you gotta slide that out real carefully just so you don't bust the seal. That's the last thing we wanna do here. These seals are about 20 bucks. They're not hard to replace, but why replace it if you don't have to, you know? Again, on this side of the, uh, this side of the drive shaft, you have another U-joint here. These are pretty, you don't have to replace these unless they're bad, obviously, but uh, these are just held in by clips. It's all one big piece. It's kind of hard to see it here, but that's basically what they look like here. So once you have that drive shaft out, what you're going to want to do on this truck is you're going to want to, I recommend using a wood block or something, something that's not metal. Um, because you have to support the transmission. This is the bottom of the transmission pan here But you want to support the transmission um, So that when we start unbolting things uh, the weight of the transmission isn't pulling down on the engine and Putting a lot of extra stress stress and strain on your engine mounts because we don't want to do that here. So 
Uh, this big metal bar going across the vehicle, this is uh, a cross member and this is what supports the back side of the transmission. So what we're going to want to do is after we support the bottom of the transmission and we have our drive shaft out, we're going to want to remove the big bolts, these guys here and these guys here on this side. We're going to want to remove those and then this cross member will come down. Um, but before we remove those, we have to remove the one little, let's see if we can see it here, one little nut here. That is what fastens this mount right here to the transmission. This is the transmission mount to keep it from bouncing, um, to smooth out when you're shifting from gear to gear. Uh, it smooths that out a little bit so nothing's clunking and moving around or anything like that. So we remove that nut first, then we can start removing the four big bolts for our cross member here. Um, once this comes down, uh, you, again, you're going to have to keep your transmission supported, but once this cross member is down, uh, then we have to remove, it's a little hot, we have to remove the exhaust here. This is a Y pipe or catalytic converter pipe on this vehicle. So you got your one catalytic converter here and one over here, one for each side. Um, these are pretty simple to come down as well, but you want to be careful. Um, exhaust bolts tend to tend to get rusty, um, so you want to be careful there. This is the flange here that we're going to be unbolting. So you've got three bolts on this style. Uh, this is a three-inch collector off of the exhaust header up here. So this is probably the biggest you're going to see unless you're working on heavy-duty trucks or diesels. Um, so we want to remove these three nuts and bolts, pull those out. Um, there's one on, one set on each side. You can kind of see the other side here. And there's the other side there. So once you remove those, these are your oxygen sensors, your O2 sensors, and these are electrical connectors for them. You can see the connector here. You also want to make sure that you unclip those because when you pull that exhaust down, you don't want to ruin those connectors and pull it with the exhaust because you don't want to replace those. They're pretty expensive. Um, so once we have those unbolted there, now this is a Y pipe, so it comes down one on each side here from the engine, as you can see, and it comes back. Sorry, the camera's kind of close here. Comes back into a single. So you got the two pipes coming in. There we go. You got the two pipes coming in. It goes into one. So then you got uh, two more bolts here, one on this side and one over on this side here. Unbolt those and she'll come right down. So that's the basic start of it. Um, after that, a lot of guys, they, they like to drain the transmission fluid before they do this. Uh, personally, I don't feel the need to do so. You're not going to reuse the fluid in the new transmission. Um, so I don't, I, don't, I don't really do that um, when I'm r and ring a transmission. Um, in this case, once we have those first steps down, uh, then we have to remove our engine starter motor. Uh, a couple electrical components here, uh, really small nuts and bolts, uh, like 8 millimeter. Uh, you have to remove the electrical connectors from that. And then that is bolted with two bolts. we got some oil going on there. Um, this oil, just so you know guys, this is actually uh, a bad seal on the back of this engine. It's called a rear main seal. Uh, that seal is bad. I just have not gotten around to fixing that quite yet. I should have done it the last time I did this transmission. but. This will be the fifth transmission going into this truck. It's a work truck, uh, a lot of hard miles on it, 300,000. And uh, it's always always towing things, always fully loaded with 1,000 pounds plus in the back of the vehicle. So it is a definite work truck and uh, strong running work truck though. But nonetheless, these transmissions tend to have their issues and are kind of weak. So we're gonna be replacing it yet again. Got it down to an art these days. Moving on. Um, so there are these bolts here all the way around the transmission. This is called, this, this part of it, the big hunk here, this is called the bell housing of the transmission. Um, there's gonna be bolts fastening. Now this is the part that's actually fastened to the back of the engine itself. Behind here um, is what is called a torque converter. Now that, that, basically what the torque converter is, is it is bolted by three bolts on this truck um, to the back of the engine. Um, it's adapted to what's called the flywheel disc. And the starter motor here 
there's a, uh, a little gear inside there that comes out when you engage it, when you turn the key. It comes out and engages, uh, meshes a gear from the starter motor with the flywheel gear to turn the engine. And once the engine um, is receiving its uh, air, spark, and fuel mixture, uh, that's what it'll start. <clears throat> but the um, the uh, the flywheel is uh, bolted together with that. So moving on, um, we're gonna start. Once we pull the the starter motor out here, there's gonna be an access hole, which uh, you can kind of see here. There's an access hole right here. This plastic piece comes out, and we're gonna have access to the. Um, torque converter bolts that are bolted to the flywheel itself. We have to remove those because the torque converter comes out, out with the transmission. Um, it is a separate piece, but you want to make sure it comes out with it because it's really heavy and it's full of transmission fluid and you do not want it falling on your toes. It would really, really hurt and most likely break your toes. So be, make sure we got to be careful with that when we pull it out. Um, so these are the bell housing bolts going to the back of the engine. So there should be eight of them on this vehicle. And uh, so we got one here, one down here. These are two on the bottom. And then they're gonna be all the way around going up through the top. They're really hard to see. You can kinda see one way up there at the very top. It's kinda hard to tell, but they are definitely up there. So we're gonna pull those out. And again, we're keeping the transmission supported here. We don't want it falling down, and breaking anything or hurting anybody here. So we have this supported with a jack. Um, I'm on the ground right now, as you can see. So it's a little harder to do underneath a vehicle um, at ground level because there's not a lot of room to work with here, but regardless whether you're working in a shop, on a lift, or on the ground, you have to keep this transmission supported. Uh, it does weigh a few hundred pounds. So um, once we have once we have the um, bell housing bolts removed, we've got all of our electrical components removed, we've got our cross member removed, exhaust removed, um, there's going to be the transmission lines. Now, you can see the lines here. These are the two lines. You got your in and your out. Uh, your transmission fluid flows, you know, out of the transmission, and these lines run actually into the radiator. There's a separate core inside the radiator which cools the uh, transmission oil, and then it sends it back through the opposite line, back into the transmission to be used again. Uh, um, <clears throat> So once we have all the bell housing bolts out, and once we have all the bell housing bolts out and all those other components that I had started with here, transmission's actually ready to come down. Um, you just wanna make sure that you do disconnect those two transmission lines. I don't know if I can see it up here. Oh, you kinda can. So they go in here on the side of the transmission and there's actually very little clips. You can almost see the, the blue in the little slots on those nuts there. Those are uh, those are little retaining clips to hold the lines in. The lines have a, uh, a little flange on the end of it and basically the clip locks that in. So these transmission lines will not come out unless you pull those clips first. So you wanna make sure you do that before you start bringing this transmission down because you will snap the lines, you will rip them. They are rubber more towards the transmission and you will ruin them. You don't wanna replace them. They're about 60 bucks a piece and they're not too fun to do. So, get out from underneath the truck here, actually. Um, that's pretty much it while we're underneath here right now. And I'm gonna show you guys in my PowerPoint presentation uh, some more images of the components when we have the transmission down. And I'll show you what the torque converter looks like. And we'll go on from there. I'll see you in the next video.